Hello everyone and welcome to a really wild game from round 2 of this year's FIDE Candidates Tournament. Uh, it is Hikaru Nakamura versus Vidit Gujarati. Uh, Hikaru coming off from a, a, a very strong performance yesterday against Fabiano Caruana. He got a draw with the Black Pieces where uh, Fabi did get a bit of a better position but uh, he was extremely low on time and Hikaru was uh, able to un uh, outplay him. So yesterday almost seemed like a victory for Hikaru even though the game... Uh, ended in a draw, and David Gujarati had a very, very nice game, a pretty equal one uh, against uh, Gukesh. Now, going into this game, uh, Hikaru now has the white pieces, faces Vidit, and Hikaru has, uh, I believe, a 47-game unbeaten streak in classical chess, which is absolutely incredible. And uh, last time he lost was in the previous candidates tournament in 2022, where in the final round, Hikaru lost to none other than uh, Ding Liren, the world champion Ding Liren, which allowed the Ding to qualify. Uh, to, to challenge um, uh, for the title and uh, well he just uh, w won he defeated Yanni Pomnishi uh, and it was very very close Hikaru almost won that candidates tournament and then it would be Hikaru uh, playing um, uh, Nepo for the title because no one knew that Magnus would just uh, say okay I'm not I'm not gonna play uh, but okay that was uh, two years ago let's focus on what's happening now uh, this is a really really short game one of the shortest uh, I believe uh, maybe not of course ever played in a candidates tournament but uh, the, the game was lost much, much sooner than the game actually finished. And uh, by by those uh, standards, I guess it could be the the earliest ever that a game has been lost in a candidate's tournament. I'm not sure. I, I will have to check. But yeah, uh, that's a little bit uh, an extra info. Let's check it out. So Hikaru with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. Uh, pawn to e5 by Vidit, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Okay, so it's a Rui Lopez. Hikaru checking is Vidit gonna go for the Berlin or not. And Vidit does. He goes for the Berlin defense. Pawn to d3 and bishop to c5. We have pawn to c3 and castle's kingside. So no, uh, no early draws in this one. And of course, Hikaru would not allow that as he does have the white pieces. And we even have a photo of this very nice moment. I'm not gonna... Uh, you know, uh, a, a trick you guys and not show a photo. There you have it, Hikaru pre uh, holding his king, preparing the castle. Uh, very nice photo. Uh, so to uh, get get into the mood to enjoy the game. Now let's check it out. Of course, Hikaru castles. We have pawn to d6 by Vidit, pawn to h3, and now knight to e7. Nothing new, of course. It has been played before. You're preparing to go to g6. You also have more control over d5. You're preparing to advance the pawn to c5, kick away this bishop. So pawn to d4. This is by far the most played move in this position. And usually we just see bishop to b6. Nothing spectacular. There are a couple of games where e captures and d4 was played, but that, that, that's a weird move to play. Uh, but here we have pawn to c6, and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. There are some games in the database, uh, on, in online databases, as this position has been reached in online games, in blitz games, in bullet games, but we're not going to count those as relevant for this, uh, as those were played by, well, players uh, of uh, a questionable strength. Uh, so what is happening here? Uh, uh, Vidit is saying, okay, your bishop is also hanging, but you are welcome to take my bishop on c5. And what happens if you play d captures on c5? Well, it's an extremely complicated line that I will, of course, happily show you as this is the candidates tournament. d captures on c5, c captures on b5, c captures on d6. So, I mean, this looks amazing. Why wouldn't Hikaru play this? Knight to g6, and now, okay, uh, the e4 pawn is hanging. You're going to defend it. Let's say queen to d3. Now let's say bishop to e6. And okay, you're still wondering what, what's the problem with my pawn on d6. Let's play b3. We're going to play bishop to a3 and cement that pawn. Well, here comes rook to c8. And okay, you might be thinking, well, okay, let's play bishop to a3. Uh, how is this not winning for white? Well, here comes knight to d7. And already you can feel that something is wrong with this position. Uh, the bishop attacking the h3 pawn. Uh, if the knight moves, the queen having access to h4. The knight already having access to f4 with an attack on the white queen and on all of the pawns here on light squares around the white king. And uh, it's not easy to find the move here. The engine even gives a uh, queen captures on b5 as the top move, but now just queen to f6 completely disregarding uh, the queen side pawns. And now uh, what, what do you play? If, of course, queen captures on b7, then knight f4, and white's position is already lost. So, while you can play this, and perhaps you might even get a playable possession with white here, objectively, it's solid. 
and Vidit found some real poison here on what to serve Hikaru uh, in round two of the Fide Candidates tournament. So Hikaru wants nothing to do with this. He says, nope, I'm just going back bishop to B. Uh, after C6, uh, he, he says, I'm just going back bishop to D3. And uh, Vidit says, all right, I'm going back as well. Bishop to B6. And now D captures on E5. The question is, should Hikaru take the pawn? And uh, objectively, yes, he should. And he does. D captures on E5. D captures, knight captures on e5, and now what is Vidit's compensation for this? What is, is he just going mad? Uh, no, this is uh, actually some top tier preparation by Vidit. He plays bishop captures on h3, and uh, at, by by this point in the game, Vidit spent uh, practically zero time. He has a min uh, an hour and fifty five uh, minutes on the clock, which is almost uh, his full time. You start a game with with two hours, and he says, "Okay, what do we do now?" Now the problem for Hikaru is that the best move is in the uh, the best move in the position is nothing more than probably uh, at, at best a glorified draw. For example, if G captures on F3, Vidit plays queen to B8. Beautiful move. The only move that does not lose for Vidit, but obviously he has it well prepared. And now the problem is uh, the knight is hanging. And if you move the knight, let's say you go knight to F3, then queen to G3 check. And now Hikaru is just lost. King H1, queen captures on H3 check, knight H2. Uh, the rooks come into the game, rook A to D8. Uh, the, the other rook comes into the game and this is just terrible, terrible uh, for, uh, well, for, for Hikaru. So what you will have to do after this queen to b8 move is not move the knight. You cannot play f4, of course, because the pawn is pinned. You'll have to play bishop to f4, uh, but then bishop to c7. And again, you're going to have to give up that knight. And uh, there's just no good good way to do it. If you play bishop to g3, just bishop captures on e5. Now, f4, again, the only move that doesn't lose for white. Uh, so, you know, there, there, there's not, not much you can play here. For example, f4, bishop to c7. And the game continues. Queen f3 might even be a playable position for white, but still. Uh, black has more than enough here with the white king opened up uh, uh, the way it is. So Hikaru doesn't like this. And after this bishop captures an h3 move, uh, here Hikaru was down to uh, a one minute, one hour and 20 minutes on the clock, and he decided to go for knight to c4. He didn't really spend a lot of time on this move, maybe some four minutes, but now it's definitely Vidit who, who, whose position is better, and he starts with bishop to g4. Uh, he did spend some time on this, some 20 minutes, uh, maybe a little bit less. So uh, it's fair to say that here uh, even Vidit is out of his uh, preparation. Or maybe he was just uh, recollecting his preparation. Maybe he has some sort of a, I don't know, some sort of an impressive... Uh, uh, algorithm uh, w where he searches his brain for for uh, memorized variations and that's why it took him so long to play but it is by far the strongest move recommended by the engine uh, the only move that gives uh, Vidit the advantage so bishop g4 attacking the queen of course f3 is out of the question due to the pin so what can you play queen to c2 of course uh, Hikaru doesn't mind playing this he wants to play e5 kick away the knight and take the pawn on h7 uh, which, of course, you guys know will happen as I've put that position on the thumbnail. So, okay, bishop to c7. Of course, Vidit not about to give up the strong bishop. And once the knight is kicked away, a queen can come to d6. And you can already be pressuring white king with checkmate. So, pawn to e5 kicks away the knight. Knight to d7. And, okay, bishop captures on h7 with check. King to h8. And now, bishop back to d3. Uh, and this is already pushing it uh, uh, a little bit too much. Hikaru said, all right, uh, at least maybe I can snatch a pawn and then have a playable position. But the position is no longer playable. Pawn to b5, attacks the knight. Knight to e3, attacks the bishop. And now knight captures on e5. And this is the problem here. The strongest move uh, doesn't look all that all that appealing. If you play knight captures on g4, then just knight captures on g4. And look at this, the bishop, look at this, the knight, look at the once this knight moves, the queen coming to h4. Yes, you can play pawn to g3, but it just uh, it, it just looks really bad. Queen is coming to d5. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, a pawn to f5 will be played to take away the d4 square from, from the bishop. It, it's going to be a very, very hard position to play for white. So instead, Hikaru played bishop back to e2. And also, your bishop here is hanging. Let's not forget about that. So he played bishop to e2 to counter the bishop on g4 uh, without uh, further ruining his position in front of the king. But now the position is lost. Uh, yeah, you're vetted here. What do you play? Feel free to pause the video and not just win the first game of the candidates tournament, uh, but also deal Hikaru's first loss in 47 consecutive classical games. 
while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, finding this uh, very nice series of moves. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to f5. You could also start with queen to d6, but those are the two moves you combine. Uh, pawn to f5. And now the question is, how do you how do you react to this? Uh, the pretty pretty standard reply of knight captures on g4 is met with f captures on g4. And again, it looks really, really bad. Uh, the queen coming to h4 once the knight moves, and if you block it with g4, then you just free up the f3 square for the uh, for the uh, for the knight. Uh, I mean, it's uh, really really a, a, a bad situation. This knight can come to d5, clear clear the path for the for the black queen. Also, the rook can come into the game. It's uh, it, objectively it's lost. So instead, after pawn to f5, Hikaru said, "All right, let's play pawn to f4. Maybe it's better than <laughs> moving the the g pawn." Uh, but now again. Uh, Vidit's position is winning, and he has uh, several moves to choose from. He goes for the strongest reply, bishop to b6, and now you see that there is no good way of playing this. Now, uh, to again, ask the, the question, what happens if we just capture the bishop? Well, okay, knight captures on g4, adds more pressure to the knight, and once you play something, let's say you play, uh, if, if you move the king to sort of unpin, then just rook to f6 with rook to h6, and the king has to go back. And if you try something else, so let's say rook to f3 to add another defender you simply add another attacker and you attack the pinned piece and uh, that's pretty much it for example you play a4 you're going to capture knight d captures on e3 bishop captures on e3 you're going to play knight captures on e3 and your entire position is dead so here hikaru spent quite a lot of time he had 33 minutes on the clock when he started contemplating this position he played king to f2 invested more than 20 minutes on this he's already down to 12 minutes uh, uh with it uh, more than 45 minutes uh, and uh, yeah, Judith even uh, Judith Polgar even praised this move. She said that it was an amazing genius move uh, because now Hikaru is, has already come to terms that he will lose uh, he will lose this position most probably unless something spectacular happens. And the pressure is now up to Vidit to uh, you know choose from there. Are, there are probably five winning moves here, but there is perhaps one that is not winning but looks winning. Maybe maybe he chooses that one. But it was not Hikaru's day. Uh, Vidit goes for the for the top engine move, knight to d5. He just piles up on the on the pinned piece. We have rook to h1 with check, king to g8, and now f captures on e5. Uh, so okay, what is Vidit's next move? Again, absolute strongest, queen to g5. Just piling up on that knight, and once captures start happening, that's pretty much it. Uh, here Hikaru played king to e1. There is a some merit to exploring pawn to c4 because now you're forcing the knight to capture knight and if knight captures you play pawn to c5 attack the bishop and also uh if a, a knight captures queen you will capture the black queen however it doesn't yield much knight captures bishop captures and after bishop captures and c5 coming with check you will move the king now even just bishop captures on e2 and after let's say knight to c3 you can take the rook but also you don't have to as i mean the bishop is saying you can just move the bishop and you're just up too much material there, there's no compensation in this. So Hikaru played king to e1. We have bishop captures on e3. Vidit started capturing. Bishop captures on g4. Queen captures on g4. And now bishop captures on e3. But again, uh, playing in the most precise move order. Knight captures on e3. Attacks the queen. Queen to e2 uh, offers a queen trade. And of course, queen to g3 with check. We have king to d2. And now the king hunt begins. Rook a to d8 with check. King to c1. And now queen to g5, threatening some very nasty discoveries. Pawn to b3, making some room for the king. But now just knight to f1 with check. And he was in this position on move 29 that Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So Vidit draws uh, first blood. Vidit is the first one to uh, take a full point in the FIDE candidates tournament in the open section. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Some of the other positions are looking uh, really wild. So I imagine there, there will be more blood spilled this round. But we'll have to see uh, what happens. I will, of course, keep you guys informed. Here you resign because once the check is dealt with, and what, what are you going to play? King b2, knight g3 with a fork. And that's pretty much it. You're going to move the queen. Rook will be captured. And uh, well, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, Hikaru is down the exchange. His king is on b2. I mean... You, he probably just wanted to get out of the playing hole as soon as possible and make a, 
uh, you know, a video about his um, his short game. And uh, yeah, you're gonna move the rook. You're gonna take the pawn. You're gonna bring the rook into the game. I mean, there you can also push the pawn. There's very little white can even even try here. So yeah, what happened in this game uh, to uh, sort of tell the short story of this game, Vidit chose an opening that is uh, so much played that everyone knows how to play it, but then he found this c6 idea, where if Hikaru does not go for the main move on, of the engine, which just looks weird and it's ex extremely complicated, obviously Hikaru didn't know it as he spent only 4 minutes here and he just decided it was better to go back with the bishop, uh, then uh, the the sort of uh, the the idea was that uh, now if um, uh, G captures an H3 will, will be played, then uh, it's most likely a draw. And uh, a very early draw with the black pieces against Hikaru wielding white is sort of a victory in itself. And then you will try, of course, to play a good tournament. And then uh, next, uh, as it's a double round robin, you will play Hikaru with white. And then with white, you will give it your all to, to, to take a full point. But uh, Hikaru wanted more. He wasn't satisfied with just uh, giving Vidit this early equality and it uh, backfired. So that's pretty much the short story of this game. Uh, goes a long way for Vidit. And I always say, yeah, Vidit, uh, he's been uh, leading so many tournaments. He He's always, you know, uh, uh, like leading up until the final round. And then in the final round, something always happens to Vidit where he has a, you know, a heartbreaking event. And hopefully, if he has a good, good candidate's tournament, hopefully that does not happen for him. Uh, in the final round here. But we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's a long tournament. Uh, anything can still happen. This is just the first game that ended decisively. But yeah, uh, big congratulations to Vidit. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is huge for him. Uh, how will Hikaru return tomorrow? We'll see. He will again be wielding the white pieces. Should be, should be a very nice game. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. For uh, the other matchups, uh, these are the other matchups. So uh, Prague uh, is playing Gukesh. Uh, uh, Nepo is playing Galereza and uh, Fabiano is playing Nija Tabasov. So all incredible matchups. Uh, the games are looking very nice. I'm looking very much forward to covering them. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Andreas Rosenthal, David Gasparian, uh, Derek King, Henry Hunt, and Mark And for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Candidates Tournament 2024 uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.